Hi, Darren. Hey, Greg, how's it going? Um, well, thank you. So today's a pretty exciting day for us. I uh, We are here to talk about the long-awaited version 2.0 of the application analyzer. And I think for anyone who's been following the evolution of the application analyzer so far, um, we've addressed quite a few, uh, actually quite a few very significant pain points in both the developer and administrator workflows. And I know we've been doing some incremental uh, features along the way, and we've already been building it enough to possibly have released a major version before, but this is a big moment for us. And I'm particularly excited about this version, as I know that you are as well. So, yeah, I know you and I are both excited to talk about this. So why don't we do that? Where do we start? Well, that's the, the tough part because we've, you know, there's potentially dozens of new features, but I think I've kind of whittled it down to four, maybe five that I think are really worth spending some time on today. And we want to make this a relatively short video. Um, of course, we'll have all the details of the new features in our release notes. The first feature I'm going to show is the new editor. Most of our customers and users are very familiar with the classic editor with web reports. And I'm going to uh, open up from classic content server. We're going to go straight into the application analyzer. So you can invoke the application analyzer with a particular object mounted and all of its sub web reports. And we simply click content and we're into the editor. And one of the best features I think of the existing analyzer was this ability to build out an application and all of the web reports in it. But to start with one of the uh, better features I think is we have the ability to find these other web reports from within the source now. So I'm going to pick um, a web report out of this tree. And I've previously looked up to find out where we uh, where we might have a, a constant in here. Mm -hmm. So here's one here called rename objects. So ordinarily, you look at that and uh, maybe go to the constants tab, try and find it, try and figure out which web report it points to. For us in the left panel, sometimes you can find it. And for that matter, you could filter on it, look for the word rename. But what we've added now is with a simple control double click, it opens up a little panel and it shows us this is the constant. Here's the description. Here's the name. And we can uh, change that. We can edit any of this and save it. And for that matter, we can mount that object and go directly to that object where we could then go into and edit in here. So this is very exciting and you've made it look so easy. But the way you described the alternative method for doing this, you, you said it really quickly. And I think it's worth us pointing out it's that not quick. you've it's it's not quick at all no because you, you would have to navigate to a completely different page go through the function menu and everything and so far you've made all of these changes and looked at the objects without leaving this user interface yeah and if you want to go straight to the object without actually opening that little panel you can do an alt double click and nice. what it's immediately mounted it over here and, and gone into this object and of course, you can create a brand new constant um, and save that to the constants tab automatically. All of that directly from the source without ever having to go to the constants tab. So I'm pretty pleased with that. And personally, that saves me a ton of time. The next thing I want to show is related, and this is to do with getting help from the source without having to open up a tag guide. So for example, we have um, an if tag here. If I do a control click on the if tag, I get this is all of the help you would get if you went into the tag guide and searched for the if tag. Let's look at, uh, here's a sub tag, node action. Control click on that and you get all of the different sub parameters and parameters. You can find all of them here immediately without going to the tag guide. So again, for me, I use that all the time, even though a lot of these sub tags uh, I may have written originally. 
who remembers all those parameters, right? Right. Yeah. And so again, right, like what what we're saving here is developer time and, and less context switching, right? Because if I remember the the original web reports editor, when you open the tag guide, it would open it up in a new tab, correct? That's right. So we do something similar. This is how we used to support it. And you get this tag guide here and you can search for something. But you would then have to search. And having found it, double click to open it up. And this here is all of the text that we get directly in the source. So while we've always been able to access the tag guide, we've just totally shortcutted uh, the amount of time that it takes to get just to the little blob of information that you want. You don't even yeah. have to search for it and you're not losing that, you know, development flow, uh, switching, you know, switching tabs and changing contexts. Absolutely. So this is fantastic and thanks for taking us through that because I think this is the type of improvement that gets developers really, really excited. So why don't we change pace a little bit? Uh, what can you show everybody in terms of improvements that we've made in this version for say administrators and their workflow? I think that's a good segue to business workspaces uh, because this is a, a huge incremental improvement in the product. We were handling business workspaces, of course, uh, before, but I feel like we were missing an opportunity to really make the analyzer sing uh, with, with the approach that we use. Of course, business workspaces are very interlinked. I'm just going to look up just a selection of business workspaces here from our search tool. Business workspaces have multiple connections to other workspaces as per the name connected workspaces used to indicate. And one of the design principles of the analyzer is that we make interlinked objects really easy to navigate. So if I, I pick uh, an item here, business workspace here, you'll see uh, just by selecting it right away, I get a lot of information, a lot of useful details and some areas that are unique to business workspaces. So for example, we can see the workspace type, related child workspaces, uh, different perspectives and so on. And each one of these items, so if we want to look at the actual workspace type, we can click on that and now we have the workspace type, which in addition shows all of the workspaces that are associated with it. I'm going to continue in what will be kind of a circular journey to mount the ABC Alpha Committee workspace that we started with. And here you can also see related child workspaces. And if I want to see one of those, again, I can just mount it. And for that matter, in addition to mounting, all of these little icons allow you also to open the object in Classic Content Server. So you can analyze within our tool or you can immediately go to that object in Classic Content Server. We'll see here now we can see the Alpha Committee as a related parent workspace. So child workspaces, parent workspaces, workspace types, all of those things we can interconnect with. And for that matter, we can see that there's a perspective applied to this particular workspace and we can mount that. And through the existing support in the analyzer for perspectives, we can see that this particular workspace has a bunch of tabs. And for each tab, we can see all of the web reports that might be involved in that particular perspective. And for that matter, if we mount a web report, now we can use that feature to go in and look at the web report, work with the web report, and for that matter, edit it using some of our new golden edit features. So there, I joined it all up in one big package. Yeah, that's incredible. And so I was trying to make note as you were talking too, because one of the one of the best features about the application analyzer is is what you said, its ability to show all the different kinds of linkages that we have. So just in your end to end example, uh, you were showing linkages by workspace to the workspace type, active views related to that workspace. The workspace folder structure itself and all the items within there, web reports within like the business workspace, and again, all the linkages associated with web reports. It's like this is really incredible. And you're bouncing around each of these 
linkages and structures so easily. And honestly, one of the things I love the most about this, and this is going to sound su super nerdy, is that your inspection panel changes every single time depending on the object. So like the context changes for each individual object, but the user flow and like the way that you navigate through all these different sections is exactly the same, which is incredible. That's right. And the other thing is that for each unique object, there are unique sections, but there's some continuity as well. Every object has system data, all the things you would expect and imagine, along with some editability and the description, which we really encourage because we use it to build documentation at the end. You have things like audit events and access list, which are all common to the objects. But for anything unique, you get these extra sections that you can open or close at will, along with all of the useful contextual information. And that's all part of the overall design of the product. But for business workspaces, I think it really works well. So it's really nice to see the support that we have for business workspaces here. But hold on a second. As you were going through some of those panels, I saw one access list. Is that new? Can you show me what that is? Yeah, that is new, actually. Um, another thing I think we realized was maybe a small hole in what we were providing. You know, we're providing a lot of functionality, but the more we add, the more we think of things that would really be useful in the tool. And having access lists here, apart from giving you a quick view of all of the groups and the permissions on this object at a glance, again, front and center, but we also, again, have the ability now to link to users and groups. And not only did we not have the access list here, but we also didn't really support users and groups within the analyzer. So that's actually another huge increment in this release. And uh, I'll show you that here. If we mount business administrators, apart from the fact that you now get a tree of the users and groups, which of course can be visualized as we were doing with uh, objects, but also you get lots of uh, cool information. So object and usage privileges, for example, workspaces associated with a group or a user, whatever groups it's in. And of course, again, you can mount that. So now we have uh, a structure. You can kind of see, you could almost build an org chart out of this um, because of the way that we can visualize these things. I think yeah, absolutely. If you look at admin, for example, um, here's another one because, of course, admin has quite a lot of things. Some of these items, like being able to see usage privileges and system groups, these are things that you'd have to borrow for in classic content server. Uh, I think I can see us actually getting further with some of this stuff and then adding more information here. Uh, we've also got audit events for that use user. The same way that we are showing audit events for objects, we can show for a given user as well. So all kinds of useful information. And again, where we have objects or workspaces, we are linked to those and we can mount those and go in and work with those. So we're really tying it all together, the community model, the objects, um, all interconnected in this version of the tool. Yeah, which is awesome. One more little feature, one more side effect of what we've built so far. I'm going to show here on our production system. This is a system we use for distributing our software. And here I've selected a folder that has beta versions of the application analyzer. And sometimes uh, we might be uncertain or want to verify that a particular user or customer has access to a particular product. And from this access list, we can mount, in this case, this beta group. And from here, which on many, customer systems, you would have quite a lot of users and groups nested uh, somewhat like this. I can type in the name of the user and the filter now shows me uh, that this uh, Edison partner is part of this group and so on all the way up the chain. So we can immediately see that they have access and of course look at the user and again verify which groups they're in from here. So that's the start of some, I think, really useful functionality. The ability to visualize these users and groups, I think in itself is, is a pretty big enhancement. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm gonna latch on to something you mentioned 
about uh, the business workspaces and how you know through this we are able to represent that community. This is going to be a segue. <laughs> Here it comes. Uh, what can you tell us about collections? That was a pretty direct segue. <laughs> it wasn't it. You put me on the spot a little bit there, but I do have an example of collections, which I think will be helpful to demonstrate that feature. This is something I ran into yesterday. So if we go back to the uh, our demo analyzer, I'm just going to go into particular application I was working on. And the challenge I had here is that there were a number of objects that were related in some way that I was working on, and I wanted them all in one place and without other things in the folder that I wasn't working on. So for example here, the way this collections feature starts is that you can uh, click on objects and control click to select multiple objects. So here I'm going to select the objects that I want to work on, not that one, that one. And for that matter, and for example's sake, uh, you can also go into other folders. And this is kind of the strength of this relative to some collections within Content Server, is you can grab objects from anywhere. And you'll see over here, it's showing the number of selected objects. And we immediately have copy, move, and delete if we want. Uh, so if we just wanted to copy these, we can grab a bunch of disparate objects and immediately copy, move, or delete them. If you want, you can mount, which in our terminology means we put it in the left panel. So all these objects are here now, and they're part of this collection. And the collection has some properties of its own. And when you first create it, it automatically assigns it temporarily one hour, in this case, life uh, before it will just get removed. So this allows you to work on something and not have a bunch of leftover objects uh, polluting the system. That said, if we want this to last a bit longer, again, we can move, copy, or delete, but we can also manage the collection. And this allows us now to give it some kind of unique name. My project, for example, you can pick a duration anywhere from permanent one day, four hours, or whatever. So maybe we want it a bit longer than an hour, but we still don't want it hanging around. I might pick uh, one day here. The scope refers to whether I want this to be my own collection and I don't want or need other people to see it, or whether we're creating something that might be useful to a bunch of different users. We save this. It's now named. And we can find it later as we need. So these objects I can mount or I can select them in here. I can work on them. They're all collected together in a way that's useful to me. As you might expect, we've added some aspects so that I can uh, look at any one of the collections that have been created. And you see there's quite a lot of uh, uh, temporary ones that have been created by people doing testing on this system. In this case, I have my project. For that matter, you can also mount all of the all of them on the system. So at any given time, I can come back, find this collection, and use these. And this is just the start of something quite powerful because uh, you can use this to create all kinds of favorites, for example. So no, not just one group of favorites, but favorites you use for different situations, different jobs you might be doing. We're going to start to use this to allow users to collect objects. For example, we could create patches for applications or for any other area, creating an application for that matter, um, creating a group of objects that we can run audits on. So it vastly improves the flexibility of our product because you can essentially create your own aspects on the fly simply by pointing and clicking or dragging for that matter. What do you think? Yeah, that's wild. So I guess first and foremost, using it in a very ephemeral way it's keeping your workspace nice and clean and tidy so you can focus, right? And not be bombarded with a whole bunch of other things. But I really like what you're talking about too, where it's like beyond that, the whole idea of creating patches from this uh, is, is fantastic. Yeah, that's uh, not in version 2.0, but something we're very <laughs> interested in producing for our own benefit, uh, and of course, and for 
uh, many partners who use web reports to build applications that, that will be, I think, a game changer as well. Maybe in version 2.0.1. And, and I mean, like this is this is a responsible way to create collections too, right? We're not, you know, doubling and duplicating storage. We're not creating a whole bunch of temporary objects that, you know, I'm using air quotes, you know, making that copy to work on, but it always stays in the system for the next 20 years. Like this is a very responsible way of working with with objects in a collection. Yeah, and we're planning on adding uh, a feature where you can actually create a content server collection if you want. Um, mm -hmm. Just a lot easier to collect the objects for that. Um, it could also potentially be useful for other type of collecting type activities where content server collections are currently being used. Um, so there's a lot more to come with this, but all the fundamentals of it are in 2.0, along with some very useful copy, move, delete type operations. And for that matter, the ability to create your own unique work area, just working with a particular set of objects. And I think, Darren, that's pretty much all we have time to show today. Yes, and thank you so much. Uh, but I'm wondering, can you just quickly say a few words about our GitHub integration? Because I think that's something that's going to make a lot of people very excited. Yeah, you know, I've not really added this even to the release notes, but it's certainly worth uh, talking about. Uh, so this is something we added to the product for our own purposes. And the idea is if you select an application and you have a repository on the box, you will see under our um, options, import and export to GitHub. And so currently when I select export to GitHub, it's taking this application and all the pieces of it and moving it to that repository. So it's a very simple action right now. Additionally, if I do um, an import from GitHub, it'll show me any uh, existing repositories that are there and give me the option to import one of those for this application. So it's very rudimentary at the moment, uh, but very powerful for us because all of the things we're developing on this system are in GitHub uh, with different versions for different releases and different beta releases. And we're planning on doing a lot more with this. So we're hoping our customers will stimulate us with some of the things they really want in a GitHub or related integration. And so that's something we're really looking forward to, uh, to discussing with our customers. And I think uh, at that point, we probably should come to the end of our presentation. Greg, thank you so much for taking us through this. I know there's a lot of other features that are in 2.0 that, again, like you said, we don't have time to go through, but this is a, a version that's worth exploring, worth digging into, worth trying for sure. And yeah, thank you so much for showing us those top five plus one features. This is really, really exciting. And I think we're both, it's easy to say we're both proud of this and we're happy for people to try it out and let us know what they think. Absolutely, as you can tell, I'm uh, pretty passionate about demonstrating this stuff because it's something that I use and uh, I'm excited about the functionality we're creating and I'm really looking forward to uh, more people using it and giving us uh, even more feedback. You can get hold of us on any of these coordinates here and we're pretty easy to find. We're all over LinkedIn as well. All right, thanks, Darren. Thank you, Greg. Have a great one.